All right, so hey, I'm here in Orlando, Florida for eight days, and I wanted to talk through what I feel like a lot of agents are struggling with and what you can do differently than what a lot of people out there are doing. Because right now, probably right now, more insurance agents are struggling to make sales than in the history of our industry with everything going on in the world. It's easy to look for excuses. It's easy to blame other people. It's easy to not really look internally and say, you know what? That's my bad, that's my fault, you know? And so for me, anytime I've always lost a game or a tournament or a checkers match or a basketball game or, or you know, playing golf or whatever, um, as I sit here and prep for a consulting call that I have in a few minutes, um, I always blamed myself, right? I, I wanna hear from you in comments below, what have you always done when, when you've lost or when you haven't done well or when you personally didn't perform at the level in which you wanted to perform? Did you blame other people? Did you blame yourself? Like, what did that look like for you? And, and how can we all learn from uh, what you did? You know, how can I learn from, from what you did? Okay, so as I'm sitting down here and I'm getting messages every day from insurance agents, I'm thinking, okay, what are some of the things that happened in my life? Some of the stories that maybe I can share that happened along the way that you specifically can learn from and use? So when I think about that, you know, back when um, back when I was a brand new insurance agent, back, back when I was a brand new insurance agent, I didn't really I didn't really know how to get in front of people. You know, I, I, I was told that you shouldn't use leads, right? When when leads can be an asset, I was told that um, you, you can't sell over the phone. That's that's a bad. That's that's a no no. That's like that's like a that's like a freaking telesales was like a curse word back then. You know. Um, so I was, I was told all these things, right? So, so you can't qualify health. You can't ask information, just get to the door, you know? And a lot of that definitely helped with my success because it simplified a lot of things, right? And so, so I'm not saying that I want ever, I think everybody should be doing things the exact same way or that how I was trained is the right way because it really wasn't. But however, it trained me to keep it really simple. And a lot of insurance agents complicate the freak out of stuff. It's real easy to, to, to complicate things and say, well, I don't know everything. I don't know how to ask for the business. I don't, I don't know how to get in front of people. Um, some calls I'm gonna sell over the phone. Some calls I'm gonna sell in person, right? There's all this, this whole variance of, well, I don't know what to do when, when to do it, you know? And you gotta figure out what that is for you. But I'm gonna talk through some things that I did that really helped me simplify sales and succeed at a high level and share some of these stories that maybe you can learn from. Because back when I was 19 making cold calls out of a phone book, I thought, well, if I can set appointments from cold calling for this guy, then I can do it for me and I can other people do it for me and I can really, you know, I'm able to scale this thing, you know, that, that we're talking about. And so one of the things that I did that most people don't know about is I would bring over college kids, you know, and this is how to set about 20 appointments every single Monday night in about three hours, by the way, so, so, so pay attention with me. I would, I, I would bring over college kids every Monday night and have call nights. So I would go and I would grab three, four, five college kids. I was always good at recruiting local college kids. Hey, dude, what, 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 what are you doing tonight? You wanna make some money? You know, you got a chance to make a hundred bucks in two, three hours, and I'll even give you a ride and buy you pizza. You in? You know? And so I would find people and I would bring them to my office. It wasn't my office back then, I was renting space, right? And I had to, I would provide a, a, a cold call data list, people 50 to 80, 50 to 85, uh, that were in certain areas, that were on certain income levels. Um, I would provide a script, I would provide a cubicle, a chair, I would buy pizza, I would give everyone gift cards throughout the night, little spiffs for fun. Um, I would also give away cash. You know, for, for the first two appointments, they would get $10 per appointment. Uh, for the third one, they would get 20 bucks. And everyone after they would get 20 bucks as well. So if you set five appointments, you would get 10, 10, 20, 20, 20. That's 80 bucks, right? So um, I would do that, and I would call with them. I would, I would be the, I would be the leader and actually, you know, lead by example. I would get out there and and, and, and get everybody fired up and excited, and, and a lot of stuff I do with teams now. You know, I did back then, and I just simply got excited about the the opportunity to get in front of a lot of people because if you remember, at that time transition, I'm 20 years old. Okay, I'm in college, I'm playing basketball, I'm taking 21 credit hours a semester, and I don't know a lot about sales, 
um, insurance, how to get in front of people. I just knew that if I sit down and ask 10 people to buy, right, I had done enough research and I had learned enough, I had paid attention enough, and I'm like, if I just sit down and ask 10 people to buy, this is it, right? If, if I do this every single week, the chances of me making six figures are substantially higher and succeeding are substantially higher than if I don't. So for me, it was, well, if that's the goal, if that's the number, if that's the target, I was gonna do whatever it took, no matter what, no if, ands, or buts about it. I didn't care what the obstacle was, was in my way, right? A lot of people, that an obstacle gets in front of them, the, 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 them and, they're, and they're scared to proceed, if you will, or, or they proceed with caution, or an obstacle gets thrown in, they, they, they transition backwards out, right? And, and, and so for me, uh, any obstacle, it didn't matter. And I think my energy was right. I was playing basketball. My headspace was right. I was aggressive. I was confident. A lot of things that helped, right? The, the psychological stuff that really helped along the way. And after those call nights, you know, they, they, here, was, here was the script, right? For those that are curious, you know, I would even, I would even reference the, 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 uh, the, the, the company back then, right? Betty, right? Same thing. Hey, the, actually, even back then, I think I even said it wrong. Hey, is this Betty, right? That's stupid. Hey, this is Cody with blank. Did I catch you at okay time? No, it's a bad time. Okay, I'll be very brief. Hey, we've just re 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 released a brand new program to help with burial and final expenses. I want to bring the information out to you. Um, I'll, we'll be there on Friday. Is morning or afternoon better for you? That was simple. That was it. That was simple. And, and by leveraging other people's time to help me book appointments. Now, I'm not saying this was an excuse for me not to set appointments because I would go call on Saturdays and Sundays every freaking week, right? I didn't, it didn't matter. I was going to put in the work. And when, 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 we, when we would do that, I would walk out of there with eight, 12, 16, 20, even sometimes as high as 24 appointments and my entire week would be booked. You gotta remember, I couldn't run appointments in the mornings because I had um, school classes, right? College classes. I couldn't run um, appointments early afternoon typically because of basketball practice and that varied from time to time. Um, I couldn't always run stuff at nights because sometimes I would have games or tournaments on the weekends, right? When I wasn't out of town, I would leverage the weekends and, and put in a lot of work. Uh, so it really varied, but I used that as a way to, to, to really launch my career in the insurance industry by putting in the effort and the time and saying, and, and by the way, about six, probably 60% of all cold call appointments will stand you up or port you as bankers life agents call it, right? They'll stand you up, they'll port you. Um, and, and, but, but however, I used that as a way for me to get in front of my 10, right? So, if, so if we set 20 and I only sat in front of eight, I still had to sit with two others. So what I would do is if I didn't have enough appointments sat by a Friday or a Saturday, I would go out and call door knock. I remember one Friday I went and door knocked 175 doors in a matter of about eight, nine, 10 hours after school until about 10 o'clock at night and I'm two hours from home, you know? And by doing that, I, I, I really showed that I would do whatever it took. Everybody says, Cody, I, I mean, I get messages every day. Like, dude, I will do whatever you say. Just please help me. Please give me the secret to success. Please tell me what to do, right? I get sometimes, you know, sometimes we'll get a hundred inbound messages a day. And, and, I'm, and, I, and, and the other day we got messages from seven different countries, you know, and, and I'm thinking, if only people knew what I had to do to succeed in this business, you know, like everybody says they'll do whatever it takes. Most people won't. Most people won't go, go knock on 175 doors, cold doors, not even age leads, consistently for eight, nine, ten hours. Like that, that most people will never do those things, right? I'm, I'm sharing the stories of the things I did to be successful and how you can too if you get serious about this thing, right? I believe everyone in the insurance industry should be earning six figures. Right? I believe the new six figures is about a quarter million bucks. And, and I, I made $117,361.13 my first, in this pennies matter, okay? In the first eight months, and, and I, I went and played basketball the last four months, I took some time off. I shouldn't have because I came back rusty. I also shouldn't have because I could have probably earned 160, 180, maybe 200K with the lessons I'd previously learned if I'd have really just went at it for a whole year. And, and I, you know, so, so, um, for me, it was always about how do I consistently get in front of people every week? How do I leverage my time, energy, 
effort and everything else to, to really succeed and how can we do this thing big, all right? So hopefully my stories and my lessons will help you. If you love this, subscribe below. Have a great day. Hey, you love this video and you want some brain food? I got five books that every new insurance agent should read. Go watch that, grab the books, see you over there. When you read a book, when you go to an event, when you listen to a book, when you go to a mastermind, when you buy a university,